Good afternoon, brethren, sisters, saints, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Well, we've got a video here today to do, um, so we've got a lot of scripture we're going to be going over. So, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Uh, please read along with me in the scriptures we are going to be looking at today and considering. Read along with me because you know what? I'm fallible and I make mistakes. Okay, you got to keep an eye on me because of that. All right? Be a Berean. Search these scriptures daily whether these things be so. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The authorized version of the scriptures, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God. Okay? Very quickly, uh, we got a lot of stuff we're going to go through today. We have so much stuff that everything that I had hoped, me, had hoped to cover today is not going to be covered in this video. Uh, there will be a follow-up to this. We are going to be looking at the angel of the Lord and... The angel of God today. This is a question that uh, was brought up. This was something that I kind of figured eventually. This question about the angel of the Lord and uh, and the angel of God. It was the angel of the Lord that was uh, I was asked of. I always kind of figured that sooner or later someone would ask about this. And the one who I thought was going to be the one to eventually ask didn't and praise the Lord it, it, it the question came so that is what we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at the angel of the Lord and the angel of God okay now the phrase angel of the Lord appears something like over 60 some odd times in scripture we're not going to be looking at that uh, at every occurrence of the angel of the Lord we are, however, going to look at every occurrence of angel of God, which appears over something like 12 times in the scripture. We're going to look at every appearance of angel of God, but we're not going to be looking at every appearance of the angel of the Lord, just so you know, okay? Also, too, um, part of this is to be where we look briefly at the Lord of hosts, Lord God of hosts, and what host means. We're not going to be able to cover that today in this video. That will, Lord willing, be a follow-up video to this one, okay? So you know. But we are going to cover the angel of the Lord today and the angel of God. So, that's enough rattling for an introduction. we got a lot we got to go through. Uh, please get your authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me. Today, though, we are going to start in 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 on to verse 12. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. Remember, ignorant is not a lack of intelligence, meaning that someone is stupid. Ignorant is simply not knowing better. Okay? How that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea. And all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now, baptized there is not... A uh, reference of being dunked in water, okay, even though it says in the sea, okay, it's talking about how uh, the sea was, the Red Sea was parted, okay. Gotta remember, baptize, the root of baptize is a means of identification. You want to get into a Greek? Okay, baptizo, baptizo. Mean, uh, the, it was explained to me the one time that, okay, you take like a, a white t shirt. And dip it into a dye, and that dye affix itself to the white t-shirt. Baptizo. That's from a Greek. Okay? So remember, water baptism is not a requirement for salvation today. Okay? Just keep that in mind, you Catholics. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual capital, our rock, that followed them. And that rock was Christ. 
This is very important because this, Paul is showing us the saint, the tie-in that the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. God is one God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. This satanic... <laughs> This satanic, disgusting lie called the Trinity, one God in three persons, it, it, it's vomitous, okay? In the description box, there's going to be maybe the whole playlist, but several videos uh, addressing the heresy of the Trinity, okay? Just so you know, all right? But Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is only one God. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. God has a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? All right? But this verse is very important because Paul is tying in for us, like I said, the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. God himself does not change. What changes is how God deals with man. Hence, salvation is different in the dispensations. It's not by grace through faith from beginning to end, you wicked free gracers, okay? Can't get through a video without kicking them disgusting devils. But let's continue now. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. We're in verse 5, continuing on to verse 12. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And remember, idolatry, you know, is always the extension of the actual true idol itself. And what is that? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know, someone who's worshiping, uh, or excuse me, excuse me, venerating a statue of Mary. Okay, what's the true idol? Is it the thing of Mary itself? No. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You are your own God. Remember, remember, never forget this. Idolatry, you know, your Christmas tree, okay, is always the extension of the true idol yourself. Okay, never forget that. Never forget that, okay? Neither let us commit, verse 8, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Serpents, plural, okay? This is also a very good time with verse 4. Again, Paul is showing us one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Not one member of a satanic trinity. Okay, that's stupid. That's illogical. That's, that's vomitous. Okay, another very important verse here. Okay, neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Whining, complaining. Now, all these things happened unto them for ensamples. I like that word. And they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. And of course, you got to remember now, John chapter 4, John chapter 4, 20 on to verse 21. John chapter 4, 20, uh, 21, excuse me, on to verse 24. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know we. He's talking about the Hebraic Jews. Okay, remember, Jesus is a Hebraic Jew. The Hebrews are descent 
from Shem. Not Ham, not Japheth. Okay? Okay? Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. Yeah, yeah, one God and three persons. Give me a break. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. You got to remember, scripturally, Jew is equated with the Hebraic people with the exception of one verse, one lonely verse in Esther. Okay, what is a Jew will be in the description box for you. Okay, if you have any questions about that. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in lowercase s spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a capital S spirit. Capital S, as we have talked about before, is very important because it's showing that it's denoting God himself. Okay? Don't let people like Smiley Dave say to you that capitalization of the word S is irrelevant. It's very important. It's very important. Okay? But God is a spirit. A lot of Bibles take out A. And when you take out the A there, God is spirit, how are we supposed to differentiate between the two? Well, they tell you, well, that's when you got to go to a satanic phallus house, a church building modeled after Rome, and speak to a Jesuit trained cemeterian, Christian pastor, to discern for you. <laughs> no, no. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then it's like, okay, God is a, a spirit, but how is Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? God manifests in the flesh. See, the problem is you're making God small. And that is a, usually a result for you falling for the nonsense of the Trinity. Remember, Trinitarian, you got the wrong God. God is a lot bigger for than many of you give him credit to be okay and the wrong god that will be the very first video in the description box okay gonna be videos for you in the description box as well okay but god is a spirit genesis which means beginning genesis chapter one genesis chapter one verses one on to verse three in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. People? People? Okay, this will be the number two video. The gap theory. The gap theory that between verses one and two, there's million, um, you're on drugs. If you're ignorant, that's a different story. But if you're one of these Christians say, well, there's a gap theory where a million... No. Link for the gap theory debunking that heresy will be for you in the description box. There is no gap theory. There is no gap between verses 1 and 2. Okay? And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the capital S, Spirit of God, moved upon the face of the waters. God? Spirit of God, capital S. Verse 3. And God said, when you say something, you usually are doing what? Speaking with what? Words. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Hmm. And Jesus Christ is called the light of the world. What is this? This is the Godhead. Right there. We have God the Father. You got the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. And you have the Word. God said, made flesh. Capital W Word, which appears seven times in the authorized version of the Scriptures. Let's go now to the Johannian comma. 
the Johannian comma, which interestingly enough, um, some of these wicked Trinitarians, if you're a Trinitarian out of ignorance, we have grace for you. If you're one like some of the, uh, these idiot free grace pond scums who like to defend the Trinity, uh, you're devils, you're wicked, okay? You are. Get over yourself. But 1 John 5, uh, they call this the Johannian comma. And it's interesting, uh, I've seen some Trinitarians trying to use this to defend the Trinity. And they always go, when they get to 1 John 5, 7, they always like to throw in something like essence or um, character or whatever. No, this is clear. 1 John 5, okay, verses 6 on to verse 8. This is he that came by water, natural birth, and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. Okay, what does this mean? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? All right, that's basically what this is talking about. And it is the capitalist spirit that beareth witness because the capitalist spirit is truth. You know, the spirit descended on him like, like as a dove. Okay, didn't send you. Okay, all right. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, in the beginning God. The Word, capital W, one of seven appearances of capital W, Word. Okay, God said... God said, okay, and the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God moved across the waters. Those aren't three persons. Those are the three components of God. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay? And these three are one. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Spirit, soul, and body. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit. Okay, this is simple. And there are three that bear witness in earth. In earth. The Spirit, God, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Okay, you read about how the Holy Ghost uh, overshadowed Mary. Okay, there. Hey, Mormon, there was no physical procreation be between God the Father and Mary. No, no. Okay, you Mormons, hey, you two Mormon kids. I'm sure you don't watch anything, uh, but you two Mormon kids, if you happen to see this, um, when you say God the Father, what do you mean? You mean Adam, don't you? Yes, you do. Okay. Uh, there was no physical procreation here between Mary and God the Father. Okay. All right. But, and there are three that bear witness in, in earth. The spirit that, yeah, you know, overshadowed Mary. And made her with child with the Lord, and the water, natural birth, and the blood, blood shed on the cross. <clears throat> and these three agree in one. First Timothy, or what is it? What is it? That, yeah, that's First Timothy chapter three. First Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. <clears throat> and without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay? Like I said, there will be plenty of information for you down there in the description box where we talk about the Godhead and refute the disgusting trinity. Okay? All right? Now, Genesis chapter 16. 
All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort through the scriptures might have hope. We're going to be primarily in the Old Testament today. First appearance. First appearance. Now, the Godhead, which, you know, we, we just saw the Godhead in Genesis chapter 1. God created the heaven and the earth. The Spirit of God moved across the waters, and God said, those are the three components of God. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. There are, God forbid, there be three persons that make Brad Paul shine. God forbid, okay? Woo! <laughs> One of me is bad enough, right? Right? Come on, come on, okay? But, during this, we're going to see that the Godhead can separate, but yet he is one. And see, this is not in persons, okay? The components that is God can do something that you and I can do. Cannot do, excuse me. We cannot, like God, separate as he does. We can't do that. Okay? That, and see, this is why you Trinitarians, you, 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 you're crazy. You have the wrong God. See, you with this nonsensical Trinity stuff, you're putting God into your neat little categories. God is a lot bigger than you think. Okay? Wrong God will be the very first video uh, in the description box for you. But Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16. Now, Gonna have to pay attention in this video. This is a meat video which is gonna be washed down with milk. We're going to go back and forth between the angel of the Lord and the angel of God. Okay? Alright? But you're gonna see this. Alright? You asked for this, brother, so you're getting it. So Genesis chapter 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. And first appearance. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. Hmm. Found who? Hagar. Hagar. Backstory, which I considered reading, but we got a lot to go through today, so you can do this on your own time. Pause the video, be a Berean. Okay? Backstory. God promised Abram, you're going to have a son between you and Sarai. Abram believed God. Okay? But what happened was Sarai, they didn't want to wait. Sarai specifically. And hey, you read the, the context of this on your own time, you'll see. She says to Abram, Abram, okay, both believing the promise of God, but they took it upon themselves to do what God promised himself to do. Don't we run into a lot of problems when we do that? God will say that he's going to do something. You get impatient and then you look from, for fleshly means to fulfill something that only God said he was going to do and he can do. Hey, Nick, are you watching me? I, I really hope you are, son. Uh, you, you like you trying to go to uh, fleshly means to try to get rid of that devil that you have instead of going to the Lord Jesus Christ whom you ought to go to. Okay? Anyway, but that's a backstory. Sarai's like, okay, look, God, you know, going on to Hagar so she can have a child upon my knees and be kind of like, what's the word, a surrogate mother for me in a way. That doesn't specifically say that, but that is what Sarai is basically doing onto Abram, okay? Taking it upon themselves to fulfill the promises of God. Warning! So let's continue now in verse 8. And he said, now the angel of the Lord found who? Hagar. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence comest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, 
Now check this out. I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Did you catch that? Let's finish the context on to verse 14, and then we'll go over this a little bit more. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Ishmael, the firstborn of Abram. Abraham, yes, the firstborn. Ishmael, Ishmaelites, Islam. The root base that Rome fed to the Ish Ishmaelic people, okay? Ishmael, the Ishmaelites, the stem of Islam, okay? Ishmael was the firstborn. Uh, Ishmaelites, uh, Muslims even, like, well, we are descended of the firstborn of Abram. They are right, but it is in Isaac thy seed shall be called. God chooses. See, see, this is the thing, too, to not forget about this context. God chooses. God's the one who does. When we take it upon ourselves to fulfill things that God said he was going to do and only he could do, we get into problems. Ain't that right, Nick? Hmm. And he will be a wild man. Yes, Muslims generally are the descendant of Ishmael. Okay? And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked upon him that seeth me? Wherefore the, the well was called Beer Laharoi, Behold, it is between Kadesh and, and be read. Okay? Now, did you catch something here? Did you catch this? Number one, verse seven. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness. Found her. Who can hide from the presence of the Lord? Who can hide from the eyes of the Lord? No one. If you go down to hell, he's there. If you go into the depths of the sea, he's there. You're not going to escape the gaze of the Lord. So, but the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water. What does this mean? You know, in Genesis 3, okay, uh, the voice of the Lord was walking in the garden. What is this? What is this? A precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is God in a humanoid, I, I, excuse me, in the form of a man, not human, okay, <laughs> human, all right, human, beg, beg your pardon, brethren. Human is not in the scriptures. Human is in the Bible, but it is not in the scriptures. What's a human? That'll be in the description box for you. But here's the Lord. Sorry for making the humanoid reference. Sorry. Here's the Lord as a man. Okay? And number four, how do we know this is God? Okay? Verse 10. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. Did you catch that? Did you catch it? So, we have God manifest in, a, in the flesh in a precarnate form of Christ. Okay? We have God right there. We know he's God the Father. Why? I will. Okay? This is not the, the satanic trinity. The satanic trinity does not exist. Okay? So, in this context, first appearance, angel of the Lord is who? The Lord. God the Father, we know that because of I will multiply thy seed. Okay? And also, verse 13. Okay? Thou, for God seest me. For she said, have I also here looked after him that seeth me? She saw God. 
Hagar saw God, saw God. Okay? In the form of a man. Okay? In the form of a man. All right? That's how Old Testament people could see God and not get killed because you're thinking about what it is in Exodus where it's like no one could see me and live, but you could see my back parts. Okay? Moses saw the Father apart from the form of a man there. Okay? But how can someone in the Old Testament see God and live? We're right there. Okay? All right? Now, now, Genesis 21. Genesis 21. You're going to see, brother, brethren, what I said to you, this is, you know, a lot. Genesis 21. Verses, here, let me guys. Verses 14 on to 21. Genesis 21. Verses 14 on to 21. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And Paul talks about this, about the allegory. Um, it's an uh, allegory about the two covenants about the one, um, I'm not even going to say that and I'll botch it, but there are the two covenants, one that is derived by fleshly means and one that is by promise. Uh, R.E., it's an allegory, will be for you in the description box where we go over that, okay? The uh, Ishmael Hagar is a representation for us today in our instruction on, uh, in righteousness of someone taking it upon themselves to do what God has promised. Meaning, the Catholic with the cookie and the wine, the disgusting free gracer saving themselves by their own belief, the Calvinist because they're elect by whatever, whatever, okay? Or, because, or the Pentecostal because they blah, 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 and been dunked in water or something like that, all right? So let's continue. Verse, uh, where are we? Let's continue. Uh, verse uh, 15. And the water was spent in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, let, not me, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And now pay attention. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the land where he is. Did you catch that? Don't worry, let's finish up to 21 and then we'll, we'll expound on this. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand. For I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. Now, Look at verse 17. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven. Did you catch that? Catch what, Brad? Go back to Genesis 16. Go back to Genesis 16. Verse 7. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. You see that? See what? The angel of the Lord found. That's a bodily man manifestation. God as a man finding Hagar in a bodily shape, in the shape of a man. God right there. 
in Genesis 21, verse 17, and God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar, out of heaven. Did you see it? Do you see it? You do, don't you? You, you see that. Because we just pointed it out. So what do we see? We see a we see the Godhead in action. We see the Lord manifest in a bodily shape, in the shape of a man, as a man. Finding Hagar. We also see God calling to Hagar out of heaven. And we know this is God himself. Why? Verse 18. For I will make him a great nation. And also here in, where were we? In verse, in chapter 16. Uh, where it's like verse 10. I will multiply that I seed exceedingly, thy seed exceedingly. This is not two persons. Okay? This is the Godhead. The Trinity is heresy. The Trinity is vomitous. <coughs> it's your Trinity. Okay? This is the Godhead in action. Okay? So we see a bodily manifestation of the Lord in Genesis 16. But we also see the Lord calling to her out of heaven. Okay? Okay, and in that context, in chapter 21, verses 14 on to 21, okay? Out of heaven. Show me where it says it's a person. See, God is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Now, Genesis 22 Verses 7 on to verse 19. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself. A lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Now, you have for yourself a Bible, like John MacArthur, MacArthur's LSD version, the ESV, the NIV, and I think even the non-King James version, don't use that. Uh, you know, all the Catholic Bibles, they're all Catholic, they mess this verse up. Check it. You have the scriptures and you say you have an ESV around? Check it. They mess it up. Why? Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself. Who's on that cross, boy? Huh? Who was on that cross? Huh? Huh? One member of a three-person trinity? Oh, nay, nay. Unless ye believe I am he, ye shall die in your sins. See, to you Trinitarians, this doesn't make any sense. Why? You have the wrong God. And if you have the wrong God, you have the wrong Jesus. Hence, you have the wrong gospel. Hence, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Oh, you already know what I'm leading up to. I'm not going to say it. Okay, let's continue. Who's on that cross? We'll be in for you in the description box. Who is on that cross? Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> and Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told him, uh, uh, told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. And bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abram stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And now see, now we looked at verse six, uh, chapter 16 in Genesis, about how the angel of the Lord, in a physical manifestation, um, found Hagar. But check this out. Check this out. And the angel of the Lord 
called unto him out of heaven. Isn't that interesting, huh? So we see the angel of the Lord first appearance. He found her. How? Obviously, he was in a manifest form as a man. Obviously. And it was God, because I will. Okay? Here, we see the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. Okay? And said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Now people will go to this and it's like, well, see, God doesn't know everything because he says right there, now I know. <laughs> Wait a second. What kind of no is this? Hmm? It's a relational thing. You see, because if God doesn't know everything, then why serve him, right? Hey, even you atheists have said that. When they go to this, it's like, well, see, you're, you claim God knows everything, but they come to this and they say, well, see, he didn't know this. And these are like also these idiot heretics like Eric Lionheart who will say stuff that's like, well, Jesus didn't know the day and the hour. What is this a reference on to? Right here. Oh, and that will be for you in the description box. Okay, uh, Jesus didn't know, okay? All right, writing this down so I don't forget it. Okay, Jesus didn't know, okay, trying to discount Jesus and put him into the category of a satanic trinity. No, this is talking about a relational thing, okay? Because up to this point, Abraham wasn't asked to give anything this important to him. This was the child of promise, Isaac. And here the Lord is like, take your son, your only son, and offer him for a burnt offering? Talk about personal, relational is what this is talking about. See, you, in order to be saved, have to be broken of your self-righteousness. Your Isaac. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. See, that's why other things like Christianity is so dangerous. This is why free grace is so dangerous. They hop over brokenness of your self-righteousness. You're a little Isaac, dear friend, dear Christian. I'm not that bad. I'm still a good person. Just believe and receive. Therefore, you save yourself. Or here, do this and save yourself. Okay, let's continue. So the no here is not that God didn't know, but it's a relational, okay, relational knowing. You know, in Scripture it says uh, he knew his wife laying the physical thing, okay? This is a relational knowing. And no, you perverts, stop it. No, this is a relational thing, okay? Let's continue. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld behind him a ram caught in the thicket in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh. Okay. By the way, that is not a name for the Lord. Look at that. That place. You hear, hear people like the names of the Lord, the titles of the Lord. Uh, no, Jehovah Jireh is not a title of God. Look at it. That place, the actual physical place, it's not a title for God. Okay, we have a video on that somewhere on the channel where we address that. Where? I don't know. Okay? All right? <laughs> so... Let's continue. We're reading to verse 19. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Don't miss that. So the angel of the Lord was who found who Hagar in a physical manifestation by the well. The angel of God called out of heaven. 
But here the angel, Lord, out of heaven. You know, Stephen in Acts chapter 7, when he was about to sit, uh, get stoned, hit with rocks, you idiots, for unsafe people who, <laughs> be quiet, okay? I have to do that, brethren, because remember, the mind of the enemy, okay? The, the juvenile mentality. Did you read the proverb for today? I hope you did. Anyway, Stephen, looking up to, uh, to heaven, seeing Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Okay, you can make that tie in there. Okay, so he saw, Stephen saw Jesus in heaven, standing on the right hand of God. Same principle going on here. Okay, all right, let's continue. And said, by myself have I sworn, sat the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, thy seed, singular, okay, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, singular, Abraham's seed, okay, Abraham's seed. Okay, will be for you in the description box. And thy seed shall all the nations of the earth, and in thy seed, excuse me, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Ver verse 18 is a very important uh, verse for you too. Okay? Thy seed, Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? All right? And also, it shows you, obeyed my voice. There are those out there who try to be dispensational, say to you that the dispensation of the patriarchs is identical to the dispensation of today. No. Right there, you can show that. Uh, a measure of obedience was required during the dispensation of the patriarchs. The, patri the patriarchal dispensation is similar to today, but not identical. Watch out for that. There was a level of obedience that was a requirement. If uh, Noah didn't do the ark thing, okay, you figure that one out. If uh, Abram didn't go, okay, if Abram didn't do this, okay, showing you what? And plus, not to mention, there was no death, burial, and resurrection, no bloodshed on the cross yet, okay? And they were not looking forward to the cross, okay? We've, we've covered that in a myriad of videos, okay? That's another heresy that a lot of easy believers like to tell you, too, that they were looking forward to the cross. No, they weren't, okay? This is a very good verse to show you, uh, brother, if you ever run into a sister, okay? Show you that during the patriarchal period, it's similar to today, but not identical. Okay? Verse 19. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. And, okay. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. For instruction and righteousness right there too, uh, Abraham and Isaac went up alone. Then the relational knowing thing happens, and then they come down and they go off together. There, we could go off on that for our instruction and righteousness in so many ways, but we got uh, more things we have to cover, okay? Now, go to Genesis 31. Genesis 31, okay? Now, I'm going to put an X here. Uh, showing that we cover these things because I could lose my place in this quite easily. Genesis 31. Okay? Genesis 31, verses 11 on to verse 16. Okay? Now we're shifting to the angel of God here. Uh, Genesis 31, verses 11 on to verse 16. Now, angel of God called out of heaven. We've seen that what? Thus far, the angel of the Lord in a physical manifestation, but also the angel of the Lord calling to Abraham out of heaven. Okay? 
We know that the angel of the Lord, right, so far that we have seen manifest, or, and scripture is who? God himself. And the angel of God, okay, we've seen in 21, call out of heaven, right here, we see this. Remember, God is a spirit. Okay? Genesis 31, verses 11 on verse 16. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream. So the angel of God spake out of heaven, and right here, out of a dream. Okay? Saying, Jacob, and I said, here am I. And what are we reading to here? Verse 16. And he said, lift up now thine eyes, and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowedest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there... I am the God... Okay. Arise and... Arise now... Wait, wait. 13. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowedest a vow unto me. Now arise... Get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he hath sold us, and hath quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father, that is ours, and our children, children's, now then, Whatsoever God has said unto thee, do. Angel of God spake to who? Jacob in a dream. Okay? All right? Now go to Exodus 3. And this is how this all began. Exodus 3. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Now you can uh, you can tie this in with the the three children in the fire Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the the fourth person in the the fire in the book of Daniel was like unto the Son of God, okay, uh, precarnate form of Jesus Christ, you know, all right. Does this mean that there was a physical form in the fire? Well, I don't know, <laughs> but what we do know is what. The angel of the Lord, a physical manifestation. Now we see what? Physical manifestation of the Lord, of the angel of the Lord, for finding Hagar, but also, which was in heaven, speaking unto Abram. But, and we also see the angel of God calling out of heaven, but also speaking in a dream. But right here, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Oh, where well, there's so much we can go off on about how Moses turned aside to see. Okay? Hey, Nick, did you get that if you're watching? I hope you are. I hope you are. I doubt it, but I hope you are. Anyway. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, proof that there's something very big to uh, Moses, future reference, Israel, turning aside to see. God called on to him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, Jacob, Jacob, Abraham, Abraham. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Okay? And he said, here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, 
Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was sore afraid to look upon God. So God, he was able to see God manifest in the flame of the bush. Now, does this mean that it was a manifestation of God uh, in a physical form in the bush? Likened onto what we see in the book of Daniel? I don't know. I don't think you would be in error if you were to put that in there, but in the text, we don't really see it. But thus far, the appearances of angel of the Lord, I don't think you would be wrong to assume that, but what about it is to assume. But also to remember, uh, look at verse 14, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And remember, the Lord Jesus said, Before Abraham was, I am. And when Jesus said that, the Jews picked up the stones to stone him. Why? Jesus called himself the Father. Not one part of a satanic trinity, okay? Jesus said, I am. Jesus never said, I am God. You're right. He didn't have to. He merely said, I am. Okay? But, look at verse 5. And what were we reading here? To verse 6. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Joshua. Joshua chapter 5. This, this is what sparked this whole thing. Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. Who is this... Who is this... Uh, Commander of the army of the Lord of hosts. See, this is where the host part was going to tie in. We're going to have to do that for another. We're already almost at an hour. Okay, we're not going to be able to cover that today, brother. So the host thing we'll get to. Okay, this, we're dealing with the question that you asked specifically. But this is what sparked it. Joshua 5, 13 on to the close. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold... There stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? Now the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, is likened unto who? A warrior. Lord of lords, king of kings. And the sword of the Spirit, you know, Jesus, the sword coming out of his mouth, is not an actual physical sword that I've seen, things like that. No. What is that? The sword of the Spirit. But, remember, Jesus Christ, the son of David, is a king, a mighty warrior, okay? The Lord of hosts, okay? Like I said, this was going to play into it, but we don't have the time for it today, okay? It will be dressed in its own little video, Lord of hosts, okay, whenever, okay? But, so we see this guy with a sword in his hand, and Joshua is like, who are you? Verse 14, and he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And when the Lord comes back at his second coming, coming with his army, which is going to be comprised of us saints who go up at the redemption of the purchased possession to come up hither, we're going to come back with him on white horses, his army. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth. John fell on his face as dead before the Lord and did worship. And uh, angels, angels, we are not to worship angels. Okay? Not to worship angels. All right? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? Now, why is that not a capital L there? I don't know. And the angel video, you might like, well, 
you might be, well, what about the angels? An angels video. That will be number three. That will be number three. Okay. First video in the description box will be the wrong God. Second gap theory. Third will be about angels. Okay. All right. You with me? Okay. And the captain of the Lord of hosts said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Oh, big clue. The only time you're going to see anything else like that is in Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Twice mentioned, Lord, Lord, okay? Abraham, Abraham, Jacob, Jacob, Moses, Moses. So, in Joshua 5, verses 13 on to verse 15, this is clearly a physical manifestation of God himself. As what? As what? Captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? Second coming. Okay, tie that in. This in Joshua 5 is obviously God himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, precarnate form thereof. Obvious. Okay, obvious. All right, and he was coming to do what? He was coming to, to whoop a little rear end, wasn't he? Okay, yes he was. As he will be coming back at his second coming with us, his saints who go up at the redemption of the purchased possession, we come back with him. Okay? You with me? Okay? All right, now we're going to switch a little here. All right, uh, we covered that. All right, Exodus 14 now, angel of God. Exodus 14, verses 19 on to 22. And the, now, pay attention. And the angel of God which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. What are we reading to? On to verse 22. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud of darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that one came not near the other all the night. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord, the Lord, caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. Oh, we can go off on that one in so many directions. We're staying on point, okay? And the children of Israel went into the mist of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. The angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood be behind them. Okay? And it, be and it came between the camp of of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud of darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that one came not near another all the, all the other all the night. It was a pillar of fire elsewhere, it says, and a thing of a cloud, okay? So a pillar of fire and a, and a cloud. Not a physical, visual manifestation of a man thus far for the angel of God. Do you see that? Okay, elsewhere, I, I didn't get it in this, uh, for this uh, video, but elsewhere it's like a pillar of, of a fire by night and it was in cloud, okay? All right, did we just read it? I can't remember, but whatever. All right, the angel of God, the angel of God. Thus far that we see of the angel of God, we're going to cover every time angel of God appears, okay? So thus far we see what? Angel of God spake out of heaven, spake in a dream, and right here went before and removed and was a pillar of, a, of the cloud went before their face. Okay? 
pillar of the cloud, not a physical manifestation of a man thus far as we see the angel of the Lord. Okay? Remember, this is going to be important when we, uh, as we press forward. Context! Context defines. Now, numbers. Now we're going to be back on the angel of the Lord. Next time we're going to deal with the angel of God, we'll be in Judges. Numbers 22. I beg your pardon. All right, my, my lips were getting chapped something fierce. Okay, Numbers 22, verses 22 on to verse 35. Numbers 22, verses 22 on to verse 35. It's talking about Balaam. Talking about Balaam. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. An ass is a female donkey, where the mule, I believe, is the male donkey. Hey, brother, if I, sister, I got that wrong, correct me, okay? But I believe the ass, the foal, a fowl, a colt of an ass, we read in the New Testament. Okay, so ass is the female, and a mule is the male, okay? Now, what do we see? And the angel of the Lord stood in the way. A manifest physical man. Okay? And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. And his sword was drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. But Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. See right there, ass tells you, ass her, male, uh, female, okay? Okay? The ass, the female donkey, saw the angel of the Lord at the moment. Balaam didn't. Okay? But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. Angel of the Lord, no way past the angel of the Lord. Hey, hey, Nick. Hey, Nick. You watch? You, you're not watching this. But, see, you're going to have to deal with the Lord Jesus Christ, son. See, this is good instruction and righteousness. You can't go this way. You can't go this way. you got to go forward. And the only way you're going to go forward is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Very good instruction and righteousness here. Okay? So here's the angel of the Lord and a wall on the other side of him. Uh, you ain't going to get around him. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall and crushed Balaam's, Balaam's foot against the wall and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to to turn either to the right hand or to the left. Corner. You're not going to get by Jesus. You're not going to circumvent. You're not going to boot the door, climb up some other way as all of what Satan offers you. There's only one way. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Unless you believe I am he, ye shall die in your sins. He said, uh, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus Christ is the Father. There's no way around the Jesus who is. Great instruction and in righteousness here. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with the staff, beating his ass to, you know. But the ass could see the angel of the Lord. Balaam couldn't. Don't, don't skip by that. See, Satan, you know, with Catholicism, easy believism, Calvinism, German Catholicism, uh, 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 Pentecostalism, Christianity, boot the door, climb up some other way. That's what all it is. The reality is, narrow place on a sinking submarine, son! The only way is the straight way. And 
And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. And she said unto Balaam, unto Balaam, Balaam, what have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And elsewhere in scripture it says, the ass spake with man's voice. So a female, the ass, which is a female, female donkey, spake with a man's voice. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in mine hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. It's like, well, the, the ass is saying to him, you know, there's a reason you can't see right now that I'm doing this. And Balaam's like, yeah. Then, verse 31, then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. A physical manifestation of God himself. But note that he allowed the ass to see him first before Balaam, who was consumed with uh, covetousness and, and anger. But then, you know, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. You know, the ass knows his owner, and the ox his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Oh, no, this is so rich for our instruction in righteousness. But the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. Can you imagine the terror that must have been like? Yeah, you know, something going on, and then all of a sudden you see the angel of the Lord, a physical manifestation of God himself, before you with a sword in his hand. It's like, oh, I probably would have wet myself, to be honest with you. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Don't miss that either. Okay? The ass had more sense than Balaam did. Don't miss that either, okay? Behold, I went out to a standee because, thou, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. Woo-hoo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Oh, boy. We're reading to 35. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displeased thee, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balaam. And again, the word that I shall speak unto thee. So, the, again, physical manifestation of God himself before the death burial, you know, before the, you know, before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Right here. Alright? The word I shall speak unto thee, God the Father himself. Okay? Alright? You see that? Now, now, Judges, Judges chapter 2, Judges chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 5, Judges chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 5, and the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you on to the land which I swear unto your fathers 
And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Now, the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim. God can manifest, you know, poop, poop, especially here in the Old Testament. Okay? But it says that uh, he came up. Came up. I think this is talking about from that direction. Okay? Because as he appeared suddenly to uh, Jacob when he wrestled with Jacob, okay, as he did that, so with this. But nonetheless, let's continue. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Regardless, this is showing the angel of the Lord being God himself. Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their little g-gods shall be a snare unto you. Oh, look at Rome today. Okay? And it came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of that place Bochim. And they sacrificed there unto the Lord. Okay? Now, look at Judges 5. We only got one verse to look at. Judges 5, verse 23. Judges 5, verse 23. Curse ye Meraz, said the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof. Why? Because they came not to, to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Not that the Lord didn't need, uh, needed help, not at all, but they decided to side with the enemies of the Lord. Indifference. Indifference. James 4. James 4. Just one verse. Verse 17. See, indifference, indifference, like Getty Lee said, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Brother Alexander B. Hartley and I were talking about this last night, uh, and you know, there is no shade of gray, there is no option C, you're either or, you're either on the side of God, or you're on the side of the devil. You're either saved or lost. There is no in between. There is no option C. Okay? Indifference! And see, what was that? Verse 17 and, uh, no, verse 23 in Judges 5? Uh, what was that? Uh, um, Curse ye Meraz because you didn't come to the help of the Lord. Not that the Lord needs help. Okay? The angel of the Lord said that. They were indifferent. They were indifferent. Didn't want to help. Okay? Well, I'm just going to choose option C. There is no option C. Indifference. Uh, I weren't, I weren't either cold or hot. But because you are lukewarm, gray area, option C. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Pick a side. Well, I'm not going to pick a side. You've chosen a side. If you choose not to decide, you have still made a choice. Indifference is deadly. Indifference makes the Lord vomit. Okay? But James chapter 4, if I can get there. James chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore... To him that knoweth to do good, and doeth, not, doeth it not, to him it is sin. Oh, the sin of indifference. The sin of indifference. Okay? woo -hoo! Okay, now we're going to switch again. And we're going to go now to Judges 6. Now, Judges 6 is an, is an important... Um, uh, chapter because in this chapter we see angel of God and angel of the Lord in the same chapter. Okay? Judges 6 verses 11 on to verse 20. 
And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah that pertained unto Joash the Abizurite and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. So obviously right here, obviously right here, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. It says it right there. A physical manifestation of a man before uh, before Gideon, Gideon. Okay? This is before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The difference is, uh, you know, the overshadowing of Mary and Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Born of a woman. Okay? By water and blood. This is before that. God could manifest whenever in the form of a man in the Old Testament. Okay? And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Look at that verse. Look at that verse. O oh my Lord, capital L, lowercase o-r-d. And then if the Lord, capital L, but smaller, capital O-R-D. Is he talking to two persons there, genius, or one? Is he talking to two persons or one? Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bottom. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Come on, dude. But look at that. You see that? Okay? Don't miss that. Again, is he talking to two persons or one? There, sweetie, you have to tie a little Trinitarian. You who are ignorant of it, I'm not. Not you. You devils who defend that Catholic, uh, Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic doctrine. Okay, let's continue. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of Midian, of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? So this angel of the Lord, obviously, come on, look at verse 13 there, is actually God the Father. And he said unto him, O, o my Lord, lowercase, uh, 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 capital L, lowercase O-R-D, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the capital L, uh, L with smaller, yet capital O-R-D, said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. <laughs> you, look at that, one man, as one man. Is Gideon talking to two persons here? Trinitarian, come on, give it up. At least, please, at least for this context, at least for this context, give it up. Who's, is he talking to two persons or one? Come on. Come on, it's okay. You can admit it. We, we see the text. Okay? One. Okay? And he said unto him, and what are we reading to? Uh, we are reading on to verse 24. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then shew me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. So, this physical manifestation of God himself is like, go ahead, do what you're going to do. I'll wait for you. Okay? Verse 20. 
And the angel of God said unto him, Ah, take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out and pour out the broth. And he did so. So what we have seen of the angel of God thus far. Now, look in this context thus far. Thus far the context. Context is the whole sandwich. Is the angel of God a reference unto this angel of the Lord? Or is the angel of God speaking in a spiritual way? God is a spirit unto Gideon. I think it's evident that the angel of God said unto him. See, the angel of the Lord thus far as we have seen in context is a physical manifestation of the Lord himself. We're going to look at a different a variation of that within this video. Okay, but see, that's where context, there, sweetie pie, is so important. Okay, context. The angel of God said unto him, Is this the one and the same as the angel of the Lord physically? No. The angel of God said, spake. The angel of the Lord is a physical manifestation right there. And the angel of God said, spake. It's not another person. There's one person, the angel of the Lord, right there. Angel of God spake. Spiritually. God is a spirit. You get it? You get it? Okay? Then the angel of the Lord put the end of the staff that was in his hand. So see, we see here in verse 19, or verses, uh, or where was it? Uh, verses 16, on to verse 20, the angel of the Lord is the physical manifestation of God himself. And the angel of God spake to Gideon. Okay? Spake. It does not, in context, tell us that that angel of God was in a physical manifestation. Because you got the physical manifestation, the angel of the Lord right there. Not two persons. So, God spoke to him, said, in a spiritual manner. Because if it was the angel of the Lord, the physical it would have said that. Don't miss that. Okay? Okay? God speaking to him. But then right away in verse 21, we see the physical manifestation of God where the spiritual manifestation that spake on to Gideon, okay? But the physical then in verse 21, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and there arose up a fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the cakes. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight, vanished. Jesus, when he breasted the bread, bread well, on the road to uh, uh, Emmaus, and he gave it, and he vanished. Don't, don't miss that, man. Don't miss this. Come on now. Come on now. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord, lowercase w, uh, Lord... Lower, uh, uppercase L, lowercase O-R-D, okay? Okay? And right above it, okay? All capital case, capital L with smaller but capital O-R-D. Don't miss this, okay? Alas, O oh Lord, God. For because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. But he disappeared. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Obezerites. So, okay, big meaty thing right here. We see the physical manifestation of the angel of the Lord. We see angel of God speaking unto 
Gideon. Okay? So what is this? Is this two persons? No. We are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay? Gideon saw the angel of the Lord, who was clearly God himself. But he spake to him spiritually, obviously, because there, in verse 20, where is the physical manifestation of the angel of God? These can't be the same thing. Even though God is one God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. What's happening? He saw the physical manifestation while he heard spiritually God speaking to him in verse 20. And we see also, we see also, uh, as in verse, where was that? Um, where was that? What was that? In verse 13. Uh, verse 13, we see, O oh my Lord, capital L was lowercase o-r-d, right next to it, capital L and smaller but all capital o-r-d. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Thus far, thus far, context is the deciding factor. Thus far we see the angel of the Lord as a physical manifestation of the Lord himself. And the angel of God is the spiritual aspect. Thus far. Okay? Thus far. But context, context, context. Now, Judges 13. Judges 13. Another big chapter here. Judges 13. Okay, Judges 13. We're going to break this one apart. Okay, but now pay attention to this. Okay, Judges 13, verses 1 on to verse 9. Okay, Judges 13, verses 1 on to verse 9. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and bare not. The wife of Manoah was never named. I, I think as I remember that blasphemous, disgusting miniseries made by that whore, Roma Downey. God loves you! Okay, I believe they affixed a name to that woman. The, the, the wife of Manoah was never named. And Samson was not a Hamite. Okay? Let's continue. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman. Physical manifestation of God himself unto the Lord, of the Lord unto the woman. And said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. And the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance, check this out, was like the countenance of an angel of God. His countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Hmm. Here we see a different, a variation of angel of God here. Because we see it affixed with a physical countenance. And we're going to see this when we look at this with David as his something being affixed as the angel of God. Meaning what? Bright, shining, okay? Other than, all right? We see a context differential of angel of God. Thus far, we, we have seen what angel of God means thus far. But in this context, we see a different way it's being used. In context, his countenance. Countenance is physical. Visage, also face. Okay? 
Why is thy countenance fallen? First reference. Uh, I believe that when um, the Lord was speaking to uh, Cain and Abel, he says, why is thy countenance fallen? It's a physical thing. Okay? Oh, boy. Let's continue. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. Not meaning evil, but it's like, whoa. Remember, terrible in this context is like terrifying, scary. It's like, whoa, whoa, other than. Okay? But I asked him whence he was. Neither told me he, no, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O oh my Lord! Stop. Do you see that? Capital L with all capital O-R-D, but in a smaller sense, right next to it, oh my, capital L, with lowercase O-R-D, don't, don't miss that. Please don't miss that. Let the man of God, singular, <laughs> which thou didst send, come again unto us, and teach us what we shall do unto the child, that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Now, right here, we see the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Okay? Now, we're seeing also another aspect of angel of God. But see, do you see the context? See, now, if we were to cherry pick, like the Catholics and the free gracers do, if we were to cherry pick this and just say, well, see, it, they all mean they all blunt no 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 context is showing us a differing way that the angel of God is being used okay all right angel of the Lord a physical manifestation who is clearly the father the angel of God thus far we have seen uh, from heaven uh, in a dream a pillar of cloud and whatnot but right here, we see it affixed with countenance. And right here, a physical manifestation as well. Prove it to you. Verse, 11, uh, verse 10. And the woman made haste and ran and shooed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man, the man, that the man hath appeared unto me, that came unto me the other day. So we see clearly the angel of God here being equated unto a man. So does this mean there are two persons? No. Absolutely not. There are not two persons there. What is the saying? The angel of the Lord is God the Father. They are seeing God the Father. Okay? Let's continue. And Manoah rose, and Manoah rose, and went after his wife, and came to the man, and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And look what he says. And he said, I am. See, this is not two persons. How could it be? Art thou the man? Okay, how could it be? Uh, it's impossible. No. God is one. Comprised of spirit, soul, and body. It's one man there. The same man, the same angel of the Lord. Okay? Why is it like this? It's showing us, number one, 
The angel of the Lord is a physical manifestation. But see, God, who was a, the angel of God, who spake from heaven, just like the angel of the Lord did, like Abraham saw, okay? Same like Stephen saw, okay? The Lord Jesus Christ, okay? All right, spake in a dream, pillar of cloud, but is also physically manifest. They saw God. Let's continue. Okay? And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? And how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord sent unto Manoah, it's one and the same. There aren't two persons here. They're, they're not. Get over it, Trinitarian. There are not two persons here. It's only one person. Of all that I said unto the woman, uh, of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. I, singular, only one person sitting there, or whatever. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I, singular, commanded her, let her observe. Okay, and what were we, oh, what did I say we are reading to here in... Uh, uh, Oh, we were supposed to read on to verse 23, but we kept reading. Okay, so let's keep reading on to verse 23. Okay? And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall make ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering... Thou must offer it unto the Lord. For, and now, check this out. For Manoah knew not that he was the angel of the Lord. Remember the rich young ruler? He went, a uh, good master. He said, uh, what good thing must I do that I may have eternal life? What did Jesus say to him? Why callest thou me good? There's only one good but God. But yet, the Mashiach. God the Father was standing right before him. Same thing. Same thing. It says right there, For Manoah knew not that he was the angel of the Lord. Don't, no, don't be confused. This is not confusing. The angel of the Lord is so far in context that we have seen the physical manifestation of God himself. But see, the angel of God, God himself, you know, in a physical manifestation. See, this angel of the Lord, physical manifestation, is God himself. But Manoah didn't know that. That's why he said, thou must offer it unto the Lord, because it says right there, for Manoah not knew, knew not that he was the angel of the Lord. Same thing with the rich young ruler. God the Father was right in front of Manoah, and he didn't realize it. Yet. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? That when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? <laughs> Why callest thou me good? There's none good but God. See, at the time here, Manoah didn't know what he was, who he was dealing with as the rich young ruler. He didn't know that he was speaking to the Messiah, God the Father. So Manoah took a kid and a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. And it came to pass when the flame went up toward uh, heaven from off the uh, altar that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. So this physical manifestation went up into the flame, up into heaven. Then Manoah gets it. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. Now, only one person was there. This is not the Trinity. Excuse me. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. He figured it out. 
God the Father was right there. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have shewed us all these things, nor would as at this time have told us such things as these. And the Jews require a sign. Remember? Remember? Okay? And also too, remember in Genesis 32, in Genesis 32, we have uh, Genesis 32. I wanted to bring this up. Genesis 32, verses 24 and 30. Jacob wrestling with God. And Jacob was left alone, and there was a man, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. What does Israel mean? For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask, ask after my name? And he blessed him there. But Noah asked him, What's your name? It's like, Why do you ask my name? It's secret. Jacob, what's your name? <laughs> and uh, the Lord didn't even, he just, he just blessed him. And Jacob called the name of that place Penil. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And, we, and we'll stop there, yeah, at uh, verse 30, okay? And remember uh, where, where that said, uh, Jehovah Shalom. I, I forgot to uh, mention this. Uh, uh, the place was called Jehovah Shalom. Um, uh, I didn't mention that at the time we read that. That place was called Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom is not a title for God, as Jehovah Nisai. They were names of places, not God himself. Okay? Now, now that we got that, uh, 1 Samuel 29, angel of God. 1 Samuel 29. 1 Samuel 29. Verses 8 on to verse, not 2 Samuel, not yet. Verse, 1 Samuel 29, verses 8 on to verse 11. Angel of God. And David said unto Achish, But what have I done? And what hast thou found in thy servant so long as I have been with thee unto this day, that I may not go against the enemies of the Lord the king, this is when David ran away from Saul and went among his enemies and was with the Philistines and whatnot. Uh, he, he messed up there. Okay, and the Lord orchestrated this thing to get David out from amongst the enemies. And look at what Achish says. Okay, remember what we just looked about of the angel of God as far as countenance, uh, what, the, what, what, Manoah, ah, what Manoah's wife said? Check this out. And Achish answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight, no good, as an angel of God. So countenance, which was terrible, frightening to behold, and we see here goodness and an angel of God, as an angel of God. David was not an angel of God. His countenance, um, how his demeanor, how he was, was like an angel of God. Remember, David was a man who sought after the heart of God, after God's own heart. He didn't have the heart of God, and he was by no one means an angel of God. But 
his, the way he, be, he was behaving was like it unto that. Notwithstanding, the princes of the Philistines have said, he shall not go with us to the battle. Wherefore now rise up early in the morning with thy, mas with thy master's servants that are come with thee. And as soon as ye be up early in the morning and have light, depart. So David and his men rose up early to depart in the morning to return into the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Then you read about how there was a raid to get David out of, out of there and whatnot. Okay? All right? Now, 2 Samuel 14... 2 Samuel 14, we're still on the angel of God. 2 Samuel 14, 2 Samuel 14, verses 18 on to verse 20. Okay? Then the king answered and said unto the woman. Now this is the ruse that Joab uh, fixed when he sent Absalom away. For whatever reason, um, uh, Joab did this trick to get um, David to bring Absalom back. Okay? And the king said, oh wait, verse 18 on to 20. Then the king answered and said unto the woman, Hide not from me, I pray thee, the thing that I shall ask thee. And the woman said, Let my lord the king now speak. And the king said, is not the hand of Joab with thee in all this? And the woman answered and said, As thy soul liveth, my lord the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from aught that my lord the king has spoken. For thy servant Joab, he bade me, and he put all these words in the mouth of thine handmaid, to fetch about this form of speech hath thy servant Joab done this thing. And my Lord is wise according to the wisdom of an angel of God to know all things that are in the earth. See, angel of God here are being attributed to the attributes that David was um, shooing forth. Not to actually David himself. Because, uh, hello genius, this is after the sin of of Bathsheba. This is after Absalom killed Ammon. Ammon. Okay? This is after David messed up. But yet, a link onto angel of God here. David was no angel of God. But the behaviors that he was manifesting in a physical way. The countenance, remember? We saw the countenance, very ter terrible, as the countenance of an angel of God. So David was behaving rightly as an angel of God, putting forth these attributes. Okay? Do you get that? I hope I explained that rightly. Okay? Now, while in 2 Samuel, go to 2 Samuel 19, verses 24 on to 28. Still angel of God. Still angel of God. 24 and 28. And Mephibosheth. This is after the thing where um, Absalom came around and stole the kingdom and whatnot. And uh, Joab killed Absalom. And Joab, the devil Joab, rebuked uh, the King David. Hey, you better go say something to men before they go away. Okay, that's the backstory. And Mephibosheth, you know, you can read about Mephibosheth. That's the backstory brought back in to the thing, okay? 24 and the 28. And Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king and had neither dressed his feet nor trimmed his beard nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. And it came to pass when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest not thou with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, Ziba. For thy servant said, I will settle me an ass, that I may ride thereon, and go to the king, because thy servant is lame. And he hath slandered thy servant unto my lord the king. But my lord the king 
is as an angel of God, do therefore what is good in thine eyes. You know, we as saints today, as ambassadors for Christ, we are to exhibit the things of our Lord in mercy, charity, in rebuke, in reproof, okay? These attributes that we are to manifest. Uh, um, 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 uh, Romans 12, well, thank you, Father. Romans 12, 1 and 2, okay? Oh, boy. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Don't behave like the news unit. Do not behave like dear old Franklin. Do not, well, he's, he's probably the best out of the bunch, okay? Do not behave like the praise that he isn't, okay? Those are devils claiming to be saints. They're not, okay? They're of the world. They speak of the world, therefore the world heareth them, okay? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If they don't want to hear the word of God by our testimony through the scripture, what's left? Our behavior. And he hath slandered thy servant uh, back in uh, Second Samuel. And he hath slandered thy servant unto my lord the king. But my lord the king is as an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes. So we see this thing of angel of God being likened unto righteous behavior. Righteous attributes. Uh, thy countenance as was terrible as an angel of God, as we saw that shift. You see? You see that now? Back to the angel of the Lord. In 2 Samuel. In 2 Samuel chapter 24. I skipped a little. 2 Samuel chapter 24. Verses 15 on to verse 17. Now, we're going to see a variation here. Okay? This is very important. 2 Samuel 15 on to verse 17. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba 70,000 men. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna the Jebusite. Now, Capital L with smaller capital O-R-D repented him of the evil. Okay? And the angel of the Lord stayed his hand, you know, from doing the, the uh, smiting. Okay? Now, in Scripture, we will see the angel of the Lord where it is not actually a reference onto the Lord himself as a physical manifestation, as God himself as that, but like an angel such as Gabriel or something like that. I believe this is one of those incidences. You can also tie in to this the angel of the Lord where, that stood before uh, Balaam, but, but, and David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel of the Lord, when he saw the angel that smote the people, and said, Lo, I have sinned, and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me, against my father's house. I believe in this context, the angel of the Lord here is one that is separate, 
not the Lord himself, but a destroyer himself. Okay? But a separate angel. Okay? Not the angel of the Lord, meaning God himself in a physical manifestation. Okay? All right? We see that differential. And also now go to 1 Kings. And we will also see this when we get to the New Testament. Okay, go to 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19. Okay? 1 Kings 19. Now, um, now that I'm thinking about it, um, angel of the Lord there in uh, 2 Samuel could very well be the Lord himself. But thus far, we have seen angel of the Lord meaning a physical manifestation of him. But, as we will see when we get into the books of the New Testament, that that isn't always the case. What, what is the differential there? Context. 1 Kings 19, verses 1 on to verse 8. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword, then Jezebel sent messengers unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as one, as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper, juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I, am not be for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold then, an angel touched him, and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals, and a cruse of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and touched him, and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat, and drink, and went in, in the strength of that meat forty days, and forty nights, unto Horeb, unto the mountain of God, and he came thither unto the cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, What doest thou here, Elisha? Hmm. So we see here again the angel of the Lord, a physical manifestation. Uh, we read verse 9. We, we were going to stop at verse 8, but we read verse 9. But we see again a physical, physical manifestation of of God himself as the angel of the Lord. Again, about 2 Samuel 24, 15 on to verse 17. Okay, I'm open on to correction on that. I think that was something separate. But, I mean, there again, I mean, there again, it's not the Trinity. Definitely, okay? So, and if one of you want to get a hold of me on that or post in the comment sections your thought, uh, go right ahead, brother, sister. 2 Kings now, 1 through 5. Okay? 2 Kings 1 through 5. 2 Kings 1, 1 through 5. Okay? 2 Kings 1, 1 through 5. Or 1 through 4. Then Moab rebelled against Israel. Am I in Riyadh? After the death of Ahab and ah Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber. Am I in the right place? Yes. That was in Samaria. I was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ikron, lowercase g, whether I shall recover of this disease. Hmm. Beelzebub. And our Lord Jesus Christ said about Beelzebub, If I cast out the the uh, devils by the Spirit of God, okay? All right? And if you buy Beelzebub, okay? Here you see somebody going to the devil for information. Hey, Nick, 
Don't do that. And the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say unto him, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the lowercase g God of Ekron, going to the devil? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. Hmm. The angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, now, in that context, we do not see that this is a physical manifestation. We do not know that, uh, in the context, we do not know that, um, that he was there in a bodily presence. We don't have that in that context. But regardless, regardless, speaking to Elijah, okay, Thus far, the evidence that we have seen, it is that you would not be wrong to assume that that could have been, that he could have been there in a physical presence, but we do not have it within the text, okay? We do not, all right? Now, there were others that we, uh, oh, we can't pass this one up. First Chronicles 21. First Chronicles 21. We still got to get... To the New Testament appearances here. First Chronicles 21. First Chronicles 21, verses 9 on to verse 18. Verses 9 on to verse 18. In First Chronicles 21. And the Lord spake unto, da unto Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus saith the Lord, <laughs> I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Choose thee, choose thee, choose thee, either three years famine or three months to be destroyed by thy foes, while that the sword of thine enemies overtaketh thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Angel of the Lord destroying. You know what? I repent. I think now that I'm looking at it in this context, I think in uh, 2 Samuel 24, yes. Yes. I think the angel of the Lord there in uh, 2 Samuel 24 was the Lord himself. And he said to the angel, the physical manifestation. I think that it was. Let's continue. Okay. <clears throat> Now therefore advise thyself what I what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, for great are his mercies, but let me not fall into the hands of man. Into, into the hand of man. Amen. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel seventy thousand men. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Again, this is not a trinity. Okay, a singular angel of the Lord. Okay, how is Jesus able to speak to the Father if he's the Father on earth? God is a spirit. God is a lot bigger than you Trinitarians make him out to be. Okay? And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven, having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over, his, uh, over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed with a sackcloth, fell upon their faces. Yes, again, now with this context, you know, uh, you teach others, do you not teach yourself? Okay? Now that we're going through this like this, yeah, I think that uh, that, that angel of the Lord there was, uh, you know, God himself. But then again, how could he be in heaven there? And there? Uh, remember, 
God is a lot bigger than you think. The Father dwells in the saints, uh, in the believer, but yet the Father is in heaven. Okay? Remember, the very first video for you to consider about this will be the wrong God in the description box, okay? Now look at verses 28 on to verse 30. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him in the threshing floor of Oran the Jebusite, when he sacrificed there, for the tabernacle of the Lord which Moses made in the wilderness and the altar of burnt offering were at that season in the high place of Gabeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of the Lord. Now, in the Old Testament thus far, what we have looked at, there were a lot others that we could have looked at that we haven't, but this is what we looked at. We see that the angel of the Lord, for the most part, is a physical manifestation of God himself. Okay? Whereas the angel of God can also be in that way, but in a manifestation of the physical attributes thereof. Okay, we already saw that. But now Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Now doctrinally, remember, Matthew is still doctrinally the Old Testament. Why? Because the death, burial, and resurrection, the bloodshed on the cross hadn't happened yet. Okay? So Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 on to 25. Okay? Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public with a K, I like that example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord uppercase L, lowercase O-R-D, appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it, was, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. What does that mean? Which being interpreted is God with us. Hey Sam, that doesn't mean that's what he's called. His name is Jesus. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. Now, let's look in Matthew 2, 11 on to verse 15. And when they were come into the house, they saw, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. These were the wise men. Now, people assumed that they were three wise men. Why? Because there were three gifts, that each one gave a gift. This does not prove categorically that there were only three wise men. We know men, plural, that there were at least two. Were, were it just three? Could it have been more than three? We aren't told specifically. But people assume it was the three wise men because of the three gifts, that each gave their own gift. Just throwing that out there for you. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, 
they departed into their own country another way. Now we had saw angel of God in a dream. Okay? But text context there doesn't say anything about an angel of God. Okay? And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Okay? In a dream. Doing exactly what, um, what the angel of God did in a dream. Okay? All right? Remember, the angel of the Lord, Stephen saw the angel, you know, Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Abraham saw the angel of the Lord calling to him out of heaven and stuff. We already covered that. Okay? But we see here, and, um, and when they were departed, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek to seek the young child to destroy him. Okay, and what are we reading on to? Uh, verse 15. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Now skip down here to verses 19 on to verse 20. 19 on to verse 20. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream again to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. So we see the angel of the Lord appearing to Joseph in the dream. What's different here? Okay. Jesus Christ does come in the flesh. Okay. And you see there, you see there, Angel of the Lord is capital L with lowercase o-r-d. Okay? Alright? And have you noticed? Okay? Go back to Matthew uh, chapter 1. Lower, uh, uppercase L, lowercase o-r-d. Alright? Don't miss that. Where in the Old Testament, you see that appearance... Of a physical manifestation, but then, like we already looked at, uh, uppercase L with uppercase O R D, but smaller. Okay, do you see that? Don't don't miss don't miss that. Don't miss that. Okay. Now Matthew chapter twenty-eight. Matthew chapter twenty-eight, verses one on verse eight. Matthew twenty-eight verses one on verse eight. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to draw dawn toward the first day of the week, Sunday, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. Right here we see angel of the Lord. Now this I believe clearly is not God the Father himself, this angel of the Lord that descended from heaven. I don't believe it was. I believe this was just an unnamed angel. Okay, and we see context telling us otherwise. Okay, I think I was uh, inaccurate at the first about 2 Samuel uh, uh, 24, 15 through 17. But you see me correct? See, I teach others, do, does not the Lord teach me while doing this? Okay, amen, amen. Okay, but I believe this was, I don't believe this was uh, a physical manifestation of God the Father himself. Why? Because the resurrected Christ. Okay? Alright, let's continue. 
He is not here. For he is risen, as he said. Come see where the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run, run to bring his disciples word. Angel of the Lord, capital L with lowercase o-r-d, differing from the majority that we see in the Old Testament. I do not believe this uh, was as we had seen in the Old Testament. I do not believe that at all. I believe this is an angel of the Lord, meaning an unnamed angel, not God the Father himself. Okay, because, you know, the resurrected Christ. Okay? All right? So we see this aspect of it changing as angel of the Lord like an actual other angel rather than what we have seen uh, already previously demonstrated in the Old Testament. Okay? Now let's go to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Verses 11 on to verse 16. Luke chapter 1. Luke, come on. Luke chapter 1. Verses 11 on to verse 16. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, now note too, capital L O R D. Lowercase O-R-D. Yes, that appears like that in the Old Testament, but we've already covered that. Okay? And when Zechariah Rias saw him, he was troubled. Troubled, and fear fell upon his face. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. What are we reading to here? Verse 16. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And look down at verse 19, okay? Oh, let's read too, verse 19. And he shall go before him in the spirit uh, and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well stricken in years. And the angel answered unto him, I am Gabriel. What is, okay, now, where was this? There appeared an angel of the Lord. An angel of the Lord. And this angel of the Lord is identified as who? Gabriel. So we see here, angel of the Lord, not an actual reference onto a physical manifestation of God the Father, but we see it as a reference onto an angel such as Gabriel. And how do we get how do we arrive at this? Context. Okay? that stand in the presence of God. And I am sent to speak unto thee and to shew thee these glad tidings. Okay, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I, yeah, I should have had that in the notes, but Luke 2, 9 on to 15 now. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people.
For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior with seven letters, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which came to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Okay? And look at that angel of the Lord there. Capital L, O, lowercase o-r-d. Okay? Now, the book of Acts. The book of Acts. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Jesus Christ is God the Father. All right? So, Acts 5, 17 on to 20. Acts 5. 17 on to 20. Then the high priest arose, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the prison, in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors, and brought them forth, and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Now, was this the Lord Jesus Christ himself? Well, he said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? Now, they opened up the, 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 they laid hands on the apostles and put them in the prison. And nobody identified this individual as being the Lord himself. Hmm. 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 But another occurrence of the angel of the Lord. Verse, uh, chapter 7 now, verses 30 on to verse 33. Okay? And here is a reference on to Joshua 5, uh, 13 through 14, and Exodus 3. Uh, Acts 7, 30 on to 33. And when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. Notice it says an angel of the Lord. Okay? When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and he drew near, near to behold it. The voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled, and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where, all, where thou standest is holy ground. Again, showing you that the, you know, the one that was in Joshua was God the Father. Okay? And Jesus called himself and said, I am. Okay? And now, Acts 8, 25 and 26. Acts 8, 25 and 26. Acts 5, 28 and 20, uh, uh, Acts 5, 25 on to verse 26, excuse me. Where, where, wait, wait, where am I going? Where am I? Okay. Acts 5, wait, what did I, Va, uh, Acts 8, <laughs> Acts 8, I'm sorry, 25 and 26. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem 
and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Now, the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. Jesus, the Lord spake unto Philip. I believe also with the, the, the angel of the Lord got him out of prison. Now, that context that we had looked at didn't specifically name the Lord, but I believe it was the Lord. Okay? All right? Nobody identified him as the Lord, but I do believe that was the Lord. Okay? Right here. The angel of the Lord said to Philip, saying, Arise and go the, the, toward the south unto the way that goeth from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Okay? All right? And now, Acts 10. Acts 10. Acts 10, verses 1 and verse 8. Now, we're going to see angel of God again here. There was a certain man in Cicera called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently, don't miss that, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius! Now, with what we have seen of angel of God already, we can already have a pretty good idea of what, number one, he had a vision. Vision, don't miscount that. And what we have learned of angel of God, it fits. Okay? He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid, and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and call for one Shimon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Shimon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Okay? Vision. Saw in a vision an angel of God. Don't miss that. With what we have already deciphered about the angel of God. Okay? All right. Now, Acts 12. Acts 12, 5 on to 11. Peter, therefore, was kept in the prison. But prayer was, was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And the keepers between, before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garments about thee, and follow me. And went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And what are we reading to on this? Verse 11. When they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord, and went out, and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand 
of Herod for all, and from all the expectation of the Jews. Peter said he has sent his angel, a representative, the Lord himself in this context, has sent his angel, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Was that the Lord himself? Peter's reaction, the Lord has sent his angel, his angel, a manifest, physical manifestation of the Lord himself, but Peter didn't uh, acknowledge it to being Jesus himself. Okay? But the Lord was the one that got him out regardless. So I'll let you wrestle with that one, okay? All right, now skip down to verses 20 on to verse 23. And Herod, Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with one accord to him. And having made Blastus the king's chamberlain their friend, desired peace because their country was nursed by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made, as, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a lowercase g, God, and not of man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. Hmm. Okay. All right. Now, we're almost done, actually. Angel of God, Acts chapter 27. Like I said, for those uh, things that we looked at, where it's unclear whether or not that's actually the Lord and not being identified with what we have seen thus far, you figure it out. Okay? <laughs> Acts 27, verses 21 on to verse 26. And please, leave your comments, brethren. Acts 27, 21 on to verse 26. And, and this was Paul on the boat. And they are informed of thee. I'm uh, Acts 27, Brad. <laughs> Acts 27. Acts 27. 21 on to 26. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve. Right there, whose I am, Paul's angel of God, the Lord himself. Of whose I am, I, am, I'm, I belong unto the angel of God. So Paul is saying the Lord, the Lord Jesus stood by him, even though he didn't name him by name. Okay, so that uh, gives you to think about uh, the angel of the Lord that got him out of the prison and Peter out of the prison. Was that the angel of the Lord? I mean, was that the Lord himself? Probably. Yeah, I'll go with it. If I'm wrong, correct me. And correct me publicly because others need to see it. Okay, go ahead. Hurt me. I love it when you hurt me. <laughs> okay. Saying, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit, we must be cast upon a certain island. Now here's an interesting thing. Angel of the Lord and angel of God. Angel of the Lord, the last appearance after the death, burial, and resurrection, I believe, um, that I looked at, I think, was in Acts. But regardless, angel of God, or angel of the Lord, to my knowledge, does not appear in the Pauline epistles. The angel of the Lord appearance doesn't go past 
the book of Acts, why the Jews require a sign. But the angel of God, Galatians, Galatians, Galatians chapter 4, verses 8 on to verse 20. How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, this is talking about the relational thing again. Okay, a lot of Christians know God up here. Saints know God through a living, breathing relationship. Okay, it's a dialogue, not a monologue. Okay. Known of God. God knows who every single one of you is. But God doesn't know you relationally, all of you. Okay? That's what that means. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements wherein, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days like tomorrow, or Christ's mass, and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me, uh, injured me at all. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first, and my temptation which was in my flesh ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Did they think uh, Paul was God? No. They received him as an angel of God, meaning Paul was exhibiting those attributes as an ambassador, as a new creature. Okay? All right? That's what that means. Okay, let's continue. Whereof is, where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record that it that if that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and had given them me. Remember what you and I talked about, brother, in our conversation. He, this was brought up too. Okay, Paul was manifesting the attributes of what it is to be a saint, proving what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's why the way you serve the Lord reflects Him. That's why you reject and don't even listen to these disgusting free gracers, because what they manifest is of their father, the devil, not the Christ who is. Okay? The way you behave matters. It really does. Okay? Does your behavior affect your salvation? No. But it affects your testimony onto those who will behold you when they will not hear because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And all these wicked, free grace heretics, what are they giving an example to? To their father, the devil, who's okay, who's okay with vulgarity, who's okay with profanity. Remember, free gracers are not saved. Okay, let's continue. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealous, all, uh, zealously affected always in a good thing. And there is none good but God. And not only when I am present with you. Wow. My little children, of whom I travail in, in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now. And to change my voice. For I stand in doubt of you. Whew. That 
dear friends, dear brethren. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I must have bit my tongue or something. Sorry for that. That is going to be it for this video. Okay? Um, I hope this has answered your questions. If, uh, I know this might have brought up a whole bunch of other questions for you. That's fine. Talk it out amongst yourselves in the comment section. Do whatever you want to do. Okay? But um, that is going to be it for this video. And as you can see, this, this took a lot of time to put this together. Okay? It, it really did. And um, praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ who is God our Father. For everything that he gave and revealed for this. So thank you, brethren. Mm, praise the Lord. Um, thank you for watching. If you do, please keep us in your prayers. We need all we need all the prayers we can get. And I'm gonna get this uploaded. And thank you. And thank you, brother. Remember, any questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, if you guys want, you know, in the comment section. You know, talk it out amongst yourselves. Do whatever. But I think, uh, Lord willing, he has given us a really good idea of the angel of the Lord and the angel of God. So, until the next video, hopefully will be tomorrow. Bye-bye.